As promised, Pat Berry, quilter and author of Creative Studio User Manual, is here and she's going to show us or tell us about what is point to point on yes. the computerized quilting machines. Yes. And I can't wait to see because I've seen the sampler, mm -hmm. this cute little sampler that you've done. And mm -hmm. so you're going to show us some of the things that I, um, we can do on that. I am. Point to point is a confusing concept, but it literally means to click two different points on your quilt and CS will stitch either a straight line or a pattern in between those two points. And they can be continuous. So you can click one, two, three, four, five, and a pattern or a straight line will be stitched in between every pair of points, which makes sashings very easy, which makes cross hatching very easy. But we're going to start with stitch in the ditch. Okay. Can't okay. wait to get started. Awesome. We'll do that. The first uh, point to point we're going to do is a stitch in the ditch. You'll see on their sampler um, I have what simulates seam lines mm -hmm. and that's what we do is we stitch right in the seam line and I first will choose the mode button and go over to the icon that looks like a target that's point to point and as soon as I initiate that or select it the prompts come up on the screen there's a dialog box and it allows me to click various different points and to do that, I'm going to press the OK button. And since I know that these are really very straight lines, I could probably get away with clicking and then moving all the way to the other corner and click again, mm -hmm. and then all the way to the other corner. But we all know that seams aren't necessarily straight. <laughs> so if the seam looks like it's got a bow in it, it is possible to do a series of clicks very close together uh -huh. and just follow the seam line if oh, you need to. Oh, I see. Okay. Yes. And when we're all done, you press the stop button. Okay. And I'm ready to quilt now. I could go ahead and start the quilting and it would do this or I could move over to the next block and click all the way around it and the next block and click all the way oh, around really? it. Oh really? So you can do all that now and then I can. just quilt it all out. A little warning if you do that. Mm -hmm. We all know that quilting shrinks the quilt. Yes. So I would recommend do one or two. Don't do too much Too much all okay. at one time because it definitely will it'll make... change the position. It'll change the position mm -hmm. and, and it really counts in mm -hmm. the uh, stitch mm -hmm. in the ditch. And I like the fact okay. that the computer prompts you. It helps nice? you. Yes. yes. That's yes. nice. True. So we're ready to go ahead. Uh, in order for me to get out of the point to point, I press and hold the shift key and then press the exit button. And now I'm back to the regular screen. Mm -hmm. You can see the image of the lines that mm -hmm. we're going to stitch. And I'm ready to quilt. The machine moves right over to the beginning stitch, prompts me to pull up the bobbin thread, and click OK. And now, Notice how slow this is. Mm -hmm. There are two speeds. Normally, CS will be at 50% motor speed when it's stitching a pattern. Yes. But obviously, uh, doing stitch in the ditch, most of us are right on top of it, and we're actually make sure you're right in the ditch. Yes, mm -hmm. actually manipulating the fabric to make sure that we're in the ditch, and therefore, mm -hmm. it's we're fortunate that we can set a much slower speed for point-to-point -point line. That's nice Isn't because the seams can be pressed or they can fold underneath yes. and that can throw you off. So Absolutely. I can see how useful that would be to it be is. able it's to really great. manipulate the fabric. Mm -hmm. That's great. We can speed it up if we want to. And again, that's by pressing the increase the speed button. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we're doing 30% now, which by comparison seems a little quick. Yes, but, yes. But it's still quite uh, that's slow. about how fast or slow, you know, we go when we're hand guiding. Exactly. And, and it's difficult, you know, because it it's hard to use the channel locks and, it is. and hand guide it. So it's excellent. Wonderful. Isn't that nice? Mm -hmm. And then as it gets to the end, it takes our tie off stitches and it waits for, it tells us to stitch, cut the bobbin thread, which mm -hmm. we'll do. Pull that, that, pull that up, grab the Todd's catch and cut. Catch and cut. Yes. One of my favorites. Okay, and there we are with a stitch in the ditch. That's great. Isn't that fun? Okay. There's one more application for um, point to point line that I really love. Okay. And that is to create a cross hatch. There's a section, a small section, that's only an inch tall on this particular quilt that I would like to demonstrate. And instead of pretending that I can click on evenly spaced um, one inch increments, mm -hmm. I'm going to use the grid. 
So, oh, how neat. Yeah, let me show you on the computer screen. I'm going to first start with a boundary around the area that will eventually be quilted. Okay. But that'll just be a guideline. So I'm going to choose the boundary icon. Go ahead and click on boundary point one. And this looks nice and straight, so I'll continue on. I'll just give myself a few. When I'm done with the boundary, I press stop and it encloses it, so it will okay. actually close the space for me. Now I have a boundary on the screen, and we can move to the computer, and I'll show you how we're going to create a crosshatch pattern. Okay. Here you see on the screen, we have the boundary that I drew around our area, and it's roughly an inch tall. It does not align with the grid, but that's okay. Within the, the draw commands are some sewable items, one of which is P2P -P line. So where earlier I showed you we use the machine head to click on the various different yes. points, mm -hmm. this time I'm going to use the mouse to click on the various different points. Okay. So I'm going to choose that. And I have the grid point snap on, that's the G on this bar at the end, at the bottom. And notice how the machine just snaps to the intersections mm -hmm. of my grid. Well, I'm going to start over here toward the left of my bounded area and start clicking. You're just kind of drawing on the screen, I'm doing aren't a you? zigzag, yes cool I is am. That? Isn't that fun? And you know those are all one inch. I know they are, mm -hmm. exactly. And I'm going to get close to the very end down here. And I started a little bit to the left of the beginning of my boundary, so mm -hmm. I'm going to stop. Well, yeah, I'll take it right about there. And now I'm going to close off my boundary and zigzag my way back again. So we're actually drawing the pattern for we are. that little area. Not only that, we're going to be able to save this as a pattern, and we will be able to reuse it, uh -huh. which is very important because we have another section the same size at the bottom of our quilt, so we don't have to go through the creation of our little crosshatch here again. We can just use the one that we had. Whoops, I clicked twice on the same spot, so I'm just going to say, okay. But it tells you that. It tells me that, and I'm just <laughs> going to keep on going. I can see that you could get really fast, you know, once yes. you know what, are familiar with everything. Exactly. And, oh, fun. When I'm done, I right click and I'm done. Okay. I'm going to press escape and I'm going to click on the G again down here just to turn it off. That way I won't be surprised if I forget now and then okay. choose it later. So we now have this pattern. I'm going to select the entire thing. And the gray handles are our stretch handles, which is probably going to be very handy for me. Let me oh back it up goodness, a little bit here. Oh my goodness, I can here. see already. See how I, yeah, yes. I moved the pattern over, and I'm a little too long, so I'm going to just Scoosh. bring this in a little <laughs> bit. Yes. And let me zoom in on the right-hand side. What happened? I'll zoom in on the right-hand side and notice that I'm, I'm kind of low. Mm -hmm. If I grab the uh, resizing handle and just slide it up a little bit, I get much closer. So you can now get the, that right on, yeah, can't you? The gray handles are fussy. They actually stretch and manipulate the whole shape of the pattern. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. um, double-clicking on this, if I'm more comfortable with the purple handles, mm -hmm. then again, I can just move it a little bit. See. Okay, let's move back to the, let's double check the center. That's not bad at all. And we'll go to the very beginning of our pattern. And now again, we have a bit of a drift. I'm going to go back and by double clicking, I'm rotating it through each of the different pattern anchors. And I'm going to bring this down just a little bit. And now I'm still hanging down a little bit at the bottom, so I'm going to bring that corner. And now I have just manipulated this pattern to fit that exactly. Wow, and all on the screen it, so you don't have to unpick. Yes, yes. That's isn't that really great? good. Now watch this. Right-click, export the pattern, 
the file format that it uses is CSQ. We're going to say OK. And now it takes us to our pattern directories. Mm -hmm. And I can choose whatever folder I want. I can call it whatever name I want. And I'll call it um, top xhatch. Not only that, but the copy of this pattern has now been included in my list of patterns on the Wonderful. upper left-hand corner. So I don't even have yeah. to go look for have it when I want directory. it later. Exactly. Great. And there's our pattern. So I can't wait to see that stitched out. Okay. Let's stitch that out. Let's do that. All of this without the use of uh, tools, uh -huh. and it's just an amazing tool. It is. Another tool for us to use. It is. For those that are very comfortable with that and uh, want to be comfortable with that. Yes. And uh, I, th I think it's wonderful because as we get older, you know, um, <laughs> the accuracy is really important. And, yes. And I'm beginning to think um, this is really it a is. great thing. It's awesome. Absolutely. And then up and back down. Oh. We're going to use point to point again in a minute, and we're going to actually choose a pattern. Okay. And so we'll be clicking various points on our sashings mm -hmm. and going around our blocks, and every CS will stitch that perfect pattern in between every pair of points, which is really neat. Wow. And one of the other good things, we're going to turn off freeze aspect this okay. time. Okay. So we will now define our... Now explain free aspects. Okay. Freeze aspect means that Creative Studio will maintain the proportion of the pattern. Mm -hmm. If we change one dimension, it will automatically change the other one for us. Okay, so it, if it's going to be here and then it gets bigger, it's going to stay in the same proportion. proportion. That's okay. right. Sometimes you want to turn that off. Uh huh. And that is, and our sashings are a good example of that because um, the sashing height needs to stay pretty stable mm -hmm. and oftentimes depending on the block and the piecing accuracy our width isn't necessarily going to stay the same mm -hmm. so we're going to turn freeze aspect off okay okay all right and we're done here let's go ahead and tie off cut the bobbin thread now let me show you how to do point to point using a pattern and we're going to go around the blocks with the sashing wonderful it is it's really okay. fun the uh, pattern itself need to fit in our one inch height sashing. Mm -hmm. And I have already set the dimensions so that our height is three-fourths of an inch. Okay, that gives us that allowance. That's correct. Okay. And as a result of that, if it's three-fourths of an, of an inch um, high, it will be about three inches wide, mm -hmm. which is close to meaning I and I need about a nine or ten inch dimension here. So we're getting close. Mm -hmm. That's the that's the time you turn freeze aspect off. I now always, freeze aspect mm -hmm. means that the pattern is going to always be in that proportion. That's correct. Okay, that's so we're going to turn that off we're because turn we off. may have some slight that's correct. differences. I need to click my spots in a roughly three inch increments. Mm -hmm. And if I go three and a quarter inches, I don't want the pattern to grow taller than three-fourths mm -hmm. of an inch. I get it. Similarly, if I'm at two and three-fourths inches, I don't want it to shrink. I always want that pattern to be the same height because mm -hmm. that's how we'll make the sashing really visually attractive. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so I have a very high-tech tool here that I have to sign I like for this. this is kind of stuff I do <laughs> all the time. Oftentimes, I'm... Uh, hesitant to mark a customer's quilt unless mm -hmm. I really have to mm -hmm. and this is a good way to avoid that and I have given myself I just put a piece of masking tape on a template grid the template grid has uh, the quarter inch markings on mm -hmm. it so I can visually identify things and these arrows are roughly three inches apart so I put this nice and close um, let's say we're going to start our pattern in, in a way that I have as few starts and stops and po as possible. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I'm not going to normally start up here at the upper left like we normally do. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start in the center and I'm going to start clicking like this so that I can rotate is around as many blocks as possible oh, without good idea. stopping. Yes, yeah. I like that. Otherwise you have a lot of starts and Very stops. Very creative. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to bring the machine over here Make sure we have the correct pattern highlighted, and we do. It's P to P flower, and the height is three fourths of an inch. Freeze aspect is off, mm -hmm. and the width is two point nine eight, and that's perfect, roughly three inches. Okay. I will mode over to the icon, the P to P pattern icon, and I have changed this to select a pattern. 
and select it. And here we are with the pop-up dialog box. Mm -hmm. And it's just going to patiently wait until we start clicking points. OK. So I will position this. And I want to click my points in the center of the sashing. And then I'm going to move over here. Over here. So nice, the machine adjusts here. to. Isn't that amazing? You know, different um, imperfections, maybe Absolutely. in the quilt. I have already clicked on this mm -hmm. point, so I'm not going to click again. I'm just going to move it up to the next one, the next one, and the next one. Reposition my little template here. After a while, you get to the point where you can almost eyeball it, mm -hmm. and then you don't really need the template at all. I'm going to come down this side. And continue on. Notice I can either use the button in the left handle, mm -hmm. or I can use either one Your of center. the OK buttons on the keypad. And I can see how you just go around these to do it in that continuous mm -hmm. sewing. That's great. It takes a little bit of thought, but after mm -hmm. a while you develop a rhythm and it just happens really quickly. And you can't beat the accuracy. I can position these patterns exactly where I want them to be versus um, repeat patterns. Mm -hmm. There, sometimes you spend a lot of time fussing with the actual alignment to make sure it's right. Okay, I'm going to press stop. And I actually could now go, I missed a section right up here, so I could actually go back and click that if I wanted to. Or I can stitch out what I have already identified. And then go and back. Go back and fill in. And that's okay. what I'm more likely to do because then I can hit those points exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we're ready to quilt. I'm going to press and hold the shift button and then press exit. And that way I can exit out of here without having to walk back and grab the mouse and move over to the quilt icon. And here and we it go. It starts. Wow. Well, let's just watch this stitch out. There are a lot of patterns, the point-to-point -point patterns on the computer, and they're very easy to use. And there are also um, a lot of patterns that can be modified to become a point-to-point -point pattern. Mm -hmm. And it is great to be able to take one pattern and, and modify it a little bit and then use that motif in different areas of the quilt so it all matches and kind of blends and flows. I can see how creative you can be with the computer. I know a lot of people think that because it's a computer, that the creativity is you're going to be limited and mm -hmm. actually it's the opposite. It's it the opposite. It opens up yes. all of those new avenues for you. Yes. That's great. Well, I can see how perfect that sashing looks and that went so nicely in fun? there. Yes, it did. So now you're going to show us some curved um, yes, continuous curves. Some continuous. people call it continuous curves. Some people call it the pumpkin seed. Okay. The difference with this is it's a pattern, but it's actually a half a pattern. So we have to plan our path mm -hmm. going f forward and backward. And so the combination actually makes the design. Okay. So I'll, let me just do a couple of them for you. I'm going to bring the machine over here. I've already sized the pattern to be just a nice soft arc. These are two inches wide. And I know from experience that the height should be about 0.4 inches. That okay. makes it look, look really nice. So I'll start in one corner, and I will choose point-to-point -point pattern. And I can just start clicking away. So I'm going to click exactly on the intersection. These would be seam intersections. And that laser light shines down right Isn't where you need that to click. Nice? Yes. yes, it's really helpful. So I have clicked all the way across the row, and now I need to come back. And the two pieces will create the pattern. And now I can come up and do it again on this next row.
That's and pretty fast again. sewing there. <laughs> it is, isn't it? And I, now on the third one, I'm going to do something a little different. Now I'm going to actually come down and do the vertical parts of this. Uh, down and back up again. And over. And down. And back up again. And over. Down. And continue my path until I go all the way back to my start point. And then I will have created, there we go, I'm done. And now let's take a look at the screen. You can see that the continuous curve, and we'll stitch this out in a minute so mm -hmm. everyone can see it, but the continuous curve actually looks like circles have been done. So many people will do this with a circular template. Uh -huh. and do one arc at a time. Mm -hmm. Is this easy or what? Well, I can see you could use this on Lone Stars, too. We oh, do so yes. many of those. Yes. This is it's, great. It is. It, on oh. Lone Star, I would keep the arc a little flatter, mm -hmm. but it is mm -hmm. very, very effective. All right, let's get this quilting. Oh, it goes right to that point, too. It does, oh, doesn't it? perfect. This yeah. is another example, though. You don't want to quilt 90 inches of border just all at once. Yes. Just because the quilting itself is going to pull, and it'll shrink mm -hmm. up a little bit. I find the accuracy of this is just amazing to me. I mean, it's mesmerizing. I could stand there and watch it. And here we are coming down yes. with the vertical pieces. And it's hitting right it's hitting in sure. that intersection. And even if you miss a little bit the fact that we go through every intersection four times, horizontal and back, mm -hmm. vertical and back. Mm -hmm. So even if you miss a little bit, it kind of covers it up. Yes. And you could do this real tiny too, couldn't you? Oh, yes. Yes, oh, yes, that's how they do those little backgrounds. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. And then if you're really feeling like doing micro stipple, mm -hmm. you can micro stipple on the inside. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> or even take this pattern and shrink it down and just click on the diagonal and there your little sashing oh. flower could be positioned exactly in the center. And see, of that. you just keep thinking. Can Aren't you? they great? Yes. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank that's you. That's beautiful. Thank you. Well, we thank you so much for showing us and opening up these possibilities for oh, my us. My pleasure, entirely. It's amazing what you can do with this it machine. Is. And thank really you again is. for being here. You're very welcome. Thanks for the invitation.